So there's one thing that <clears throat> that my wife always tells our kids when they leave the house. And they she always tells them, don't be a burden, be a blessing. What's up guys, this is Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and hey, you remember the other day when I said uh, Yeah, my hydraulic pumps Kind of making a noise back there. That's not what I was talking about for the other day, but it's cold it Takes it a minute to warm up. We're gonna let that tractor warm up. But the other day I said, uh, you know, it, it felt like spring. It was 70 degrees outside. I said it's short sleeve weather I spoke too soon because I got up this morning and um, winter happened again it got down in the high 20s last night i think and the north wind is hitting me in the face and it's making my eyes water i promise i'm not crying Whew. gotta get the chores done let that tractor warm up because it's always just one thing or another i'm telling you what guys it's on a farm and in family and it, just in life there's always something going i can't get ahead it's always playing catch up but letting the tractor warm up because I've been having several loads of gravel brought in and dumped on my driveway. But with the work schedule being what it is and then having other events going on, <laughs> it's like, the, here's how it plays out. Your driveway gets washed out over time because it's a gravel road. And then it gets rough. <laughs> and my wife says, you got to get some rock on the driveway. It's getting rough. I had uh, several loads of rock delivered. And they try to tailgate it out, but there's bumps and humps. And so then her and Weston are like, hey, our, our, our vehicles are bottoming out. You got to get this fixed. So now we're going to get it fixed. <laughs> Anyways, got the box blade hooked up to the tractor. Going to get to work on that this morning. I've just got a very small window of time to get everything done. Because I got to go to work in like two hours. So let's get busy. Hey, girls. Any babies yet? No. What's the deal? What's the deal? Who's gonna be the first one to go? Some of you girls um, need to drop a kid on the ground. Uh huh. How's the donkey poodles this morning? Y'all good? I put out a new uh, QLF molasses tub yesterday. It's kind of funny how they make a ring in there like that but they've been chowing down on that thing look at old skip there bear dude you're wearing me out son give me just a second bro hey skip you like that tub does it taste good they're working on their round bell as you can see they're working their way up from the bottom so let's feed real quick Y'all getting ahead of me, girls? Huh? You know, alpacas are pretty smart. They know that every time I feed the goats, I bring them in here separately and feed them and shut the gate so they can eat in peace without all the hungry goats. Hey, where's your mama? How come she's not in here yet? Huh? Excuse me there, Dolly. Tina, where are you at? You're not Tina.
Come on, Big Mac. Rufus, Isaac, come here. Come on. Come on. What's the deal, buddy? Are you hungry? There goes King Isaac. <laughs> Somebody's got to lead the charge. So there's only one way to eat an elephant, right? I mean, that's just one bite at a time. And uh, I know I may sound like a broken record sometimes, but, but I have to go back because we constantly have this influx of new viewers coming in and say that this is not my full-time career. I don't just YouTube and farm and hang out here on the property for a living. Um, definitely could, I'm not gonna lie. I've always been truthful and honest with the income YouTube provides. Could easily do that, but I still have a full-time career. I work away from the house or away from the farm, minimum of 40 hours a week. So sometimes it gets tough to get everything done and it's easy to let that, I don't know, build up as stress when you have this huge list of all the things that need to be done, you know, driveway maintenance, fences need to be built. The barn is still exactly like it was the day we finished the shell. Eventually, I'd probably like to put concrete in there, some electricity, fix up some pins better so we can feed the goats without them knocking you down, some feed through fence troughs. Just all, there's always something. And uh, my goal is to just knock out as much as I can when I can like today for instance got up this morning and have to be at work by 11 so I've only got a couple hours in the morning got other things that need to be tended to in the house one thing I will say that's getting more and more increasingly difficult is handling all the stuff that's starting to come with YouTube and all the other uh, say sponsorships or events people want you to come to speaking engagements emails messages private messages comments all that stuff it's getting it's getting increasingly a little bit at a time more and more difficult to handle everything but uh i'm not complaining we're just gonna eat that elephant one bite at a time and uh, the next bite is to go work on the driveway chilly out here so there's one thing that <clears throat> that my wife always tells our kids when they leave the house and they she always tells them don't be a burden be a blessing and basically what she's telling our kids is hey don't give anybody else any grief you know do what's right but that 
Don't be a burden, be a blessing. I was thinking about that as I'm out here on the tractor. I do, I spend a lot of time thinking when I'm doing things like this because it's just kind of mind numbing and you get to thinking. But be a burden, or <laughs> be a blessing, not a burden. That really applies to so many other things in life than just when we send our kids to someone's house or out the door when they're not with us. Think about it. Think about all the things that you've been blessed with. I think about all the things that, that I'm blessed with, and I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I'm blessed to live the life I live. I'm blessed to have this piece of property, this tractor, dogs, my family. I'm blessed. But sometimes, and I know it's not just me, I know we all go through this probably, but sometimes we let our blessings be the burden. And by saying that, I mean like today, I don't have time to be out here on this tractor working on my driveway. So I'm taking as little time as I have and trying to get as much done. And in a way, this blessing of this property sometimes is a burden. And then I get to thinking about all the burdens I have. Uh, got to get the driveway fixed. Got to get things done at the barn. Got to get animals taken care of. Haven't been in the greenhouse in probably four or five days. There's weeds growing. There's grass growing up in the walkways. Um, things need to be done on the house. Things need to be done on the garage. Things need to be cleaned, maintained, projects, projects, projects. And sometimes those blessings that we l allow to become a burden cause stress. And uh, after 13 years in law enforcement, there's one thing that I have learned, and that is stress builds on you in so many different ways. There's so many things that we all do throughout our day to build stress. For me personally, in law enforcement, stress is a huge thing. I've seen so many guys lose their career, lose their families, lose their marriage over stress that they didn't know how to handle. So would that be easily solved by just quitting your job in law enforcement and say for me, and for instance, just going full time on YouTube? Well, then on the other side of that, you got somebody like Jason Crocker, who's sold everything, moved out to a piece of property with basically bare bones, nothing. It's just him. He doesn't have kids' schedules to conflict with. He doesn't have a work schedule to conflict with. But I'm telling you what, Jason's going through some stress right now in his life. A lot of people would say, if I could just move off into the woods in a cabin and have nobody else's problems, I'd be stress-free. Well, go ask Jason right now if he's got any stress in his life. And I guarantee you, he's got way more stress than what any of us would even consider thinking about. So how do we not let our blessings become a burden and then turn into stress? Well, the first thing is you've got to learn how to deal with stress. And like I was saying earlier, the only way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. Well, there's no way I'm going to get all these projects done here. It, it's just not going to happen. So we tackle one thing at a time. Heck, make a list. Make a daily chore list or make a daily to-do list. And I promise you, if you can write down four or five things that you need to get done today, when you check those off, man, that, that stress just turned into a blessing. I mean, it, it's like a weight lifted off your shoulder. Um, but then the other thing is, it, I mean, you got to learn to deal with the stress, but on the other side of it, and the Bible tells you to turn your problems over to God, and the only way to do that is to tell Him about your problems. And I'll be the first one to admit, I probably don't pray as much as I should. I don't pray the way I should, you know. A lot of us probably just say a prayer when we need something. You know, we turn to God when we, when we need help. We don't praise God the way we should sometimes. We don't thank Him for the blessings that we haven't even received yet sometimes. You know, prayer is a, uh, is a way to talk to God, but just getting that off your chest sometimes, even just, even just telling God your problems is a stress reliever. And it's not that He doesn't know your problems because I truly 100% believe that, that we serve a God that knows everything. He knows it. He knows it all. He knows what we're doing. He knows what we're going to do. He knows everything we've done. It's not that we're telling him our problems because he doesn't know about them. 
but when we just speak that and get it off of our mind, man, it helps. And, you know, there, there's a scripture in the Bible, and I can't remember exactly right now, but it's, I don't know exactly what book it's in. I want to say Habakkuk, but I could be wrong. Um, but it says, you have not because you ask not. How guilty are we of that? Are we missing out on blessings in our life because we're either too scared to ask, too ashamed to ask, or just think we shouldn't ask? How many blessings is God waiting to give you that you just have not asked for? I mean, something as minuscule and off the wall as this YouTube channel. You know, it's been probably five years in the making, and the first couple of years it was so slow, it was so painful growing. You know, just wasn't making a whole lot of progress. I did it because I enjoyed it. I absolutely love making these videos and, and doing this stuff for you guys. But there's also a business side of it. But the first couple of years, it was so frustrating. And I see a lot of smaller channels right now that are so frustrated because they're not growing. And then just, bam, all of a sudden, it takes off, you know. I think a lot of that is is God's blessing. I think God's pouring His blessings out on me and my family for for at least attempting to live the life that we're called to live. I feel like talking to this lens is is a gift that, that, that God has given me. I never would have dreamed that because growing up as a kid, I was extremely shy. I was very bashful. I mean, I grew up in the woods. Not an only child, but the only child at home. I had a brother and sister that were a lot older, but I was the only one here, so I spent a lot of time alone. I was not, was not a, a social kind of guy as a kid. And so this is totally out of character for me but i feel like um i feel like it's one of god's blessings it's one of god's gifts that he's given me to be able to sit here and, and share my life with you guys sharing my life on the internet with 215,000 people is not something i ever dreamed i would do but here we sit so hmm another one of those random daniel rants rambles like i said i'm always say I'm not a preacher, I'm a trooper. This is just the gospel according to Daniel. So don't let your blessings become a burden. And uh, yeah, I learned something from my wife in so many ways. She's an awesome person. I love her to pieces. I don't know where I would be without her. I probably would be nowhere near close to the man I am today without my wife. She's an incredible, incredible person. And uh, like I said, she always tells our kids, be a blessing, not a burden. So, I hope you can take something from that while I sit out here with my ears freezing off. Should have put on a toboggan or beanie. That's the cool word these days. The kids call them beanies, not a toboggan. But anyways, guys, I'm going to get back to work and then get in the house and get a couple chores done in there and go to work on my other job. So, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Y'all have a great day. And as always, we'll see you on the next video.